Okay, so I'm going to try to attempt to put a new hard drive in uh, this Motorola VIP 1225 uh, U-verse uh, DDR. Uh, I think it currently comes with a 160 gigabyte um, hard drive, and I have purchased this guy. This is a uh, Western Digital Caviar Green hard drive, uh, two terabyte and uh, bought it off Amazon for about 120 bucks or so. So if it works, it'll be it'll have been a sweet deal because it will um, almost, um, I guess, you know, something like 10 times the capacity, more than that, um, more than 10 times the capacity of what I have now. So uh, I'm basically going to take this thing apart. Uh, it's just got a few screws in the back. Um, I'm going to remove those and get to the hard drive and uh, take it apart and plug it in and see if it works. I'm just using some standard um, screwdrivers um, that I have. So I'm trying to put this in the view. Nothing exciting going on here. Just have to pull on it really hard and it seems to come back. So this right. thing is kind of stuck like glue on here. Um, I suppose I don't need to take that apart. Um, I'm just going to take apart the hard drive enclosure. Um, that is in here. I'm just going to, it looks like I can. Um, I would try to get at this screw, but the frame's in the way, so I'm going to just get these off, off of each side, which removes this entire case. Then I can get or take the hard drive out, replace it with the new one, and put it back in. So let's try that. I'm going to pause the video, but I'm pretty sure this is going to be uneventful. So. Okay, so I've I've removed it, turned it upside down, and now this is going to allow me to get at this drive a lot easier. Uh, it's just got the four screws. This thing is mounted in so pretty well. Pretty nice mount points for these hard drives. Um, should come right out. So let's open this new package. paying attention how I took that out, but I'm assuming this is the way it goes back in. Just got to line up the holes. This is a pretty nice case for the most part. Um, seems to line up really nicely and keeps the hard drive kind of away from the, the chassis. Um, and it's got these rubber uh, washers here that kind of uh, stop the uh, give it plenty of space here. It's really nice. It stops real nice. It's got a really good sturdy feel to it. Um, pretty impressed with this case. Okay, so I just turned it on. It's still switching, I think. Okay, so I waited something like about six minutes maybe, maybe even a little longer, I'm not sure. And all of a sudden, one gear came up, then it's this two gear business, and it seems like there's a loading bar, and um, seems to be doing something. So let's just kind of wait and see. Um, I'm not gonna time this really, but I'll kind of time it loosely in my head. Okay, so it took a good 20 minutes I think and you saw what just popped up that rethink possible and now that's gone again and now it's back um, so basically the lesson there is 
just when you think it didn't work, it, it's going to work. Um, yay. So this is after, I'd say maybe 20 to 25 minutes after I turned the unit on. It did just a bunch of flashing on and off. So at first we saw the one gear, then the two gears, then they both went away. Then then the, the main U-verse light on the left near the power button, that flashed off and on for about 20, 25 minutes. And this is with a 2 terabyte drive. I think it's a 7200 RPM 2 terabyte drive. I think that whole time it was probably just formatting the disk. Um, and now, it seems to be working just fine. And we'll see whether or not we get a TV signal. But I mean, if we've got this far, I, I venture to think that it's going to work just fine. And I uh, really hope this part doesn't take 20 minutes because I don't want to have to edit this video too much. Um, just waiting for you versus the load. And then after I'm done with this, I'm going to go upstairs and check the other TV to make sure that that's also working and connects just fine and it can record. All right. Now it says it's okay to list to to browse a list of videos, but there's not going to be any videos because there's nothing there. Um, but looks like everything is working. So if I go to recorded TV, there probably won't be anything there. Let me exit from this. Okay. That's it's a little slow for whatever reason, but I'm I'm not too worried about that. I think it's just kind of trying to boot up still to some extent. Let's go to um, menu which is what I'm really interested in, and go to Recordings, and then look at Recording Space. And as you can see, <laughs> uh, okay, so now it says it can do 332 hours of HD and 910 hours of SD, and uh, that's pretty awesome. And it says 90% of my recording space is available. I'm assuming that's actually not correct because it should be a lot more than that that's available. It should be 99%. But I'm assuming if I do a re restart, I'll, I'll probably recoup some of that. There's probably some backup files or something like that somewhere. Um, and I've seen that happen before with, with DVRs. Um, so uh, anyway, so let's just make sure TV comes on. If I go, yeah, so if I just go to... Um, here's a uh, law and order. Okay, never mind. Let's see if there's something actually on. Gosh, there's nothing going on. Here's America Got Talent. So anyway, it, it seems to be working. Let's just go ahead and hit record. And see if that works. Okay, so it says recording. That's good. And now if I go to record it TV. Yep, looks like it's recording. So so that's pretty pretty nice. I'm going to go back to this recording space business. Okay. Well, it, it certainly did work. Uh, 332 hours is a far cry from the 37 hours I had before, so I'm I'm pretty happy with this upgrade. Cheers.